Hello guys and welcome to Hungary for another edition of this F1 2014 100% race career mode. Sorry it's been taking so long to get this particular race online, but my, uh, I had to RMA my wheel there for a while because uh, one of the pallet shifters was starting to die on me, but uh, thankfully we got that out of the way, so I am back and uh, more excited than ever to get this thing out of the way. So, uh, anyway... Not surprisingly, we are looking at a about, uh, I believe it was about 25% chance of rain again on race day. And I can't remember the last time I saw so many wet races in a season. I uh, can't even remember the number of uh, completely dry races we've had so far. It's definitely not been too many. Anyways, this is our first lap that we are coming up on. It's not a particularly great lap, but this should be enough to get us into Q2. And indeed it is. Uh, Jensen Button is first in Q1 here as we manage to squeeze into fourth. And uh, that's pretty much all we wanted out of this session. So we are going to be jumping straight ahead here to Q2, running wide all over the place here. And uh, this is not the last time you're going to be seeing me doing this this weekend. I guarantee you that. Uh, don't drive this track all that much. So uh, I can definitely feel that it's not second nature to me in any way. 124. 078 a pretty bad time i have to say there so we stay out uh, on track here for another lap uh, we are currently in 10th position there but just barely ahead of guitaras which is definitely not acceptable uh, considering the uh considering the difference in cars that we're driving here so anyway coming up on our second lap here this is q2 122 551 which is an improvement of over one and a half second and uh, we managed to squeeze into the shootout here behind Nico Rosberg, Lewis Hamilton, and Felipe Massa does not make it into the shootout. And Jensen Button, Fernando Alonso, Daniel Kvyat. So I'm not really sure what these guys are actually doing in Q2. They should have been able to qualify easily, but not so. Anyways, jumping straight to Q3 here. This is going to be a most horrible first lap uh, by the looks of it so far, even though we have a nice and sunny track to drive on right now not too much traffic uh, as you can see Rosberg is in a temporary pull right there we're about four seconds down on him so <laughs> we are going to be staying out for an extra lap just to see if we can improve on that and just as we're almost running out of fuel here this is our third lap we managed to chop off one and a half second again and this is basically the best lap we managed to do here in Q3, which is good enough for sixth on the grid on race day. And as we're just going over the uh, pit strategy here, it appears that we are going to be doing two uh, stints uh, on option tires, but uh, then again, it's about it's that there's a good chance of rain during this race, so I very much doubt that this uh, strategy is going to hold up as we almost definitely have to come in for a set of wets at one point in this race so i guess we're just gonna have to wing it like we usually do here getting ready for the start we have ricardo immediately ahead of us and bottas immediately to our left and we get a pretty uh <laughs> Pretty horrible start there, getting overtaken by one of the Force Indias over there on the left as we have dropped one place, that is Hulkenberg. But uh, trying to get down the inside here, see if we can't get some of the positions back. Uh, going down the inside of Hamilton there, we're into P2, uh, right on the exhaust of Rosberg here, coming through turn one. And I have to say, I really didn't expect the AI to just yield that corner the way they did. Well certainly they're always uh, pretty easy to pass on the inside in the first turn there but still five positions uh, was a little bit uh, excessive I think anyways coming right up on Rosberg here see if we can't find a place to put him under some pressure here uh, this is going to be sector two of the track this is where I am going to be losing time I have been losing time here during practice I almost lose the back end there too I have been losing time here in sector two during practice and also during qualifying. This is really a place on the track where I seem to suffer no matter what I do here. And as you can see, Rosberg is pulling away from us here. And seemingly there's not too much we can do about that at this point here. And it appears that we caused a collision here as somebody came up to just tap us from behind there. I fail to see how we caused that collision as we run wide into the right hander there too. And, uh, 
this is not uh, this is not my favorite track by any means so I don't drive it very often and uh, I have a few that is probably going to show throughout this race but anyway to summarize for uh, lap one here uh, we are into p2 of the Hungarian Grand Prix Rosberg is in the lead and Hamilton is in p3 at the moment uh, which is very positive jumping to lap five coming through this uh, Sector two again here. We just get a little bit too much of the curb here, loosen the back end, and Hamilton takes full advantage of that, goes down the inside of us there, and seeing as we are all over the shop right now, he just seemed to be pulling away from us with no problems whatsoever here. So this could very well end up being a race of um, driving a conservative race, uh, just trying to stay on track, basically, and, and, and see if... Uh, any uh, possibilities reveal themselves here during the race because uh, right now trying to keep pace with some of the AI cars is probably not a very good idea. As you can see Hamilton there on lap nine, he's already opened up a gap of seven seconds down to us. Also Ricardo uh, is about a second and a half behind us right now and that the gap appears to be fairly constant. I believe Vettel is uh, immediately behind Ricardo as well. So the two Red Bulls is uh, about a second and a half behind us right now. Jump into lap 13 here. Hamilton is pulling away even further right now. He's about 15 seconds up the road there. And also Ricardo is starting to put us under pressure here as he is within DRS range. Uh, that said though, that doesn't matter too much on a track like this one as there's only that one DRS zone and this straight is fairly short. I do not see him mounting any sort of successful attack on us on this straight given the fact that we have the Mercedes engine and he only has a Renault. And also, we're not running a complete full downforce setup. Uh, we are running a sort of middle of the road setup there. But uh, jumping to lap 16, as you can see there, Vettel has now passed Ricardo behind us there. We run wide one more time, getting too much curb there all over the spot, almost losing the car, coming into the corner all off the line there. Vettel takes that opportunity, just sneaks down the inside of us there. We try and have a look down the inside of him, but he has none of that and it appears that he is starting to pull away from us as well. Also, I'm not sure if you can make this out, but it is starting to rain as we're starting to see some raindrops falling right now. Uh, it's been like this for a couple of laps though, uh, so I'm not really sure whether or not this is going to get worse or not. It's, uh, at this point, uh, my option tires are starting to go just ever so slightly. I'm supposed to be coming in on lap 21 uh, for our first pit stop there, but uh, just as we almost lose the back end one more time there. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of hoping that uh, that th the rain would have started to come down a little bit heavier than this before lap 21 so that we can uh, make the change to intermediates um, at that time. But as you can see here on lap 20, the rain has not intensified by any means. And even though our options are pretty dead, I really don't want to go into pit right now as, as I kind of fear that uh, two or three laps after we pit and make the switch to another set of dry tires, we're gonna have to go in again and make the switch to intermediate. So even though our tires are pretty dead at this point, uh, we like to stay out for an extra couple of laps here and see how the situation develops and whether or not we can save ourselves a pit stop here because the AI cars have already started to go into pit and have been for the past couple of laps here. And jumping ahead to lap 24, as you can see, the track conditions are still, um, not really uh, intermediate tire track conditions uh, yet. However, the rain is starting to come down a little heavier, so I expect, it to, I expect uh, the AI cars to come in and make the change for intermediates within the next three or four laps. And the only reason we're going in now is because these option tires are just dead. D-E-A-D, -E gone, that's it, kaput, whatever. So we are going in a couple of laps early, unfortunately, having to uh, see that the track conditions is not quite wet enough for inters yet but 
I really don't want to stay out any uh, longer on those option tires there as it was pretty much like driving in the, in the wets on dry tires anyway. So uh, we are going to be nursing the car around the track here for the next couple of laps. We rejoin in fifth position behind Ricardo and hopefully we'll be able to make up some spots here as the AI comes into pit if the rain intensifies. And as you can see here on lap 27, the uh, conditions are definitely for intermediates at this point here. Uh, as we are into fourth position right now, as Ricardo's already been into pit, uh, Vettel ahead of us right here. As you can see there on the mini track, there's a ton of cars in the pits already, and I believe Vettel was heading in there too on this particular lap. So it'll be interesting to see just, well, it appears that just about everybody made it out ahead of us, but uh, we are in P4 at the moment here, and we are gonna be trying to chase down Sebastian Vettel, who's in third position. And on lap 30 here, as you can see, we have closed the gap on Vettel uh, almost completely, and are looking just to sneak up behind him here and see if we can't find a nice spot to put him under some serious pressure here because we are lapping about uh, half a second a lap faster than he is at the moment and have been so for the past couple of laps here. But the question is, uh, are we going to be able to keep our cool and not make any stupid moves or mistakes here in an attempt to try and force things? Just as we pass the back marker here, one of the Lotus cars, I believe it was Groshan. Uh, this is a particular sector of the track where we seem to be faster than most of the AI cars here. And Bentley is no exception here as we are closing in on him here. Don't want to get too close because we're going to be losing all downforce on the front of the car here. It actually almost happens here coming through the turn. We almost lose the car, but look at Vettel. He just keeps on going right into the grass there. And I'm not really sure what happened, but uh, thank you very much, Sebastian. I'll take that third place any day of the week and uh, glad to see you're okay there because you're still in P4. Let's speak about being okay there. We almost lose the car into the barrier done that a couple of times during practice and uh, it's not a nice spot to lose the car because you just veer to the left and before you know it you're into the barrier and you're missing the front wheel. Anyway here on lap 35 as you can see Hamilton's into P1 and he has been for a while I'm not really sure what happened it was about the time with, with the uh, with the extra pit stop there I'm not sure what happened to Rosberg but Rosberg is about 25 seconds ahead of us and Vettel is immediately behind us. Skipping ahead to lap 39 here, uh, the situation remains fairly unchanged with regards to Rosberg, but as you can see there, Vettel uh, is about 33 seconds down on us at the moment there, so he must have been into pit for some reason. I'm not really sure why, but uh, he might have had a problem, might have gone for a change of tires, I'm not really sure, but uh, it doesn't really make sense at this point. Uh, however, as you can see, the rain is starting to subside, so I would expect us to be going in for a set of dry tires. Uh, within the next couple of laps there and uh, truth be told i would have hoped for it just to rain for a, you know a little longer time that because we could have finished our last stint on the option tire but uh seeing as we're coming in here on lap 41 to make the switch to uh, a set of dry tires we are going to have to go with the prime tire because uh, we are going to be doing 29 laps on this particular set of tires and there is no way the options are going to be lasting for that long No change in positions there. We rejoin the track in third, still behind Rosberg and still ahead of Vettel. Jumping ahead to lap 45, I have to say at this point, the car is really starting to handle well on this set of prime tires. And for the first time during this weekend, I actually feel like we're starting to put in some competitive times. However, everything seems uh, fairly unchanged in terms of gaps. We are still about 25 seconds down on Rosberg and Vettel is still about 30 seconds behind us. Jumping to lap 47 here, we are coming up on some traffic and it appears that there is a Ferrari who's trying to lap some even slower cars there, Anna Williams. And it appears that one of the Lotus cars there is uh, all over the shop. I'm not really sure which uh, which car it is, whether or not it's Groschon or Maldonado, but he is all over the place. And what is he, drunk or something? No, that's just Maldonado. That's the way he always drives. Gotta get past this guy before he fucks everything up. Pardon my French, guys. Whew. Anyway, we uh, managed to get through that little incident unscathed, so uh, things still looking good here. 
Jumping ahead to lap 49 here, there's been an incident somewhere on the track here as we've lost a couple of running cars and also we have the safety car out. So we are going to be forming up and hopefully this could give us a chance to uh, close in a little bit on Rosberg. It kind of depends on how many of the uh, how many back markers are between us here. But as you can see, uh, Rosberg is about nine seconds ahead of us now and Vettel is about 10 seconds behind us. I'm not too concerned about Vettel. We seem to have had the upper hand on him all throughout the race when it comes to pace. Uh, so I do not expect him to uh, put us under any sort of uh, significant pressure, though you should never say never. It is Sebastian Vettel after all. But uh, I figure with a little luck and the way we are running at the moment here, um, maybe, just maybe, we can put Rosberg under some pressure here as we are only seven and a half seconds down. But we have cars trying to pass each other left and right here. And Ericsson just heading for the apex there. We have to sort of, sort of cut the corner just to uh, dive beneath him there. Jumping ahead to lap 58, as you can see, we can basically forget all about catching uh, Nico Rosberg there as he's already about 20 seconds up on us. So we are coming up to lap Raikkonen in there, and uh, it appears that he almost lost the car a little bit off the curb there, just as we did early in the race, which uh, cost us a place to, I believe it was Hamilton. Um, so uh, apparently I'm not the only one struggling in that particular turn. And also the uh, gap down to Sebastian Vettel remains constant at about five and a half seconds as we just lock up on the left front there coming through the second to last corner but uh, we lost a couple of seconds there to, to uh, Vettel as we had to negotiate some back markers a couple of laps back there but uh, since then it's been uh, pretty clear sailing and uh, we've been able to keep the gap down to him constant so things are looking good so far. Jumping ahead to lap 62 here, these prime tires are starting to show a little bit of wear here, so we're just going to be nursing the car a little better than we have been doing so far. As you can see, we've actually chopped off a few seconds to Rosberg there, and the gap down to Vettel appears to be constant, but uh, we're not going to be catching Rosberg anyway, so we might as well just ease off a little bit and uh, concentrate on keeping Vettel behind us there. And on lap 65, as you can see there, Rosberg... Uh, has definitely just uh, cranked that engine up just a little bit there because he is putting in the fastest lap at this point and is pulling away from us once more. However, Vettel also seems to be falling back a little bit. Uh, I'm not sure whether or not he's saving fuel at this point because we are not going particularly fast and he is still losing about half a second a lap to us. Lap 69 here, Rosberg still really putting in some nice lap times here very late in the race. Uh, it'd be nice for us if he would be able to actually catch and pass Hamilton, but I'm not really sure what the situation is up front. Uh, as we almost lose the car here again, coming through the second to last corner, Vettel is only about two seconds behind us here, so we got to be wary of making any mistakes here uh, late in the race and uh, costing us this podium position which is uh, definitely going to be something to be happy about. Uh, well above what I've been expecting in this Hungarian Grand Prix. But as you can see there, Lewis Hamilton takes the win here in Hungary and Nico Rosberg is going to be finishing second. So it's going to be a Mercedes 1-2. Uh, that's going to hurt our chances in the uh, Constructors' Championship. But uh, this podium finish that uh, we are looking to secure here coming through the last corner uh, is definitely going to be a positive and um, it does mean that Lewis Hamilton is going to be closing the gap on us a little bit in their driver's championship. Uh, but we are still relatively comfortably in the lead in that particular competition. So a Mercedes 1-2 here in Hungary, the first in a while, I believe. Uh, we close out the podium ahead of Sebastian Vettel and Jean-Éric Verne comes in in fifth position. That is uh, pretty impressive, actually. Uh, let's see... Oh boy, the Ferraris are suffering this season. Daniel Ricardo. I'm not really sure what's happened to Ricardo there. He started out really, really strong in the first couple of races there, both in Australia and Malaysia. But uh, in these past five or six races, he has just been invisible. And once again, for the second race in a row here, he gets lapped. Uh, so, uh, so I'm not really sure what's up with him, though. Uh, it should be said, however, that the uh, Red Bull team actually offered us a contract as their second driver here after the German Grand Prix, which I have not replied to yet. So there's always that opportunity, I guess. Anyways, guys, uh, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please don't forget to leave a like or subscribe to this channel for more F1 2014 action. And I'll be seeing you soon enough. Bye-bye.